Hi, this is John from 3D Focus TV, and I'm near a small village called Arundel, which is very near Bognor Regis. Now, you probably wouldn't expect anything 3D related in this sort of a small area like this, but behind me in this studio lies the home of Lenticular Europe, which is a company that specialises in spectacular lenticular 3D displays. Now, I want to see some of his previous work, but the main reason I'm here is because I want to find out exactly how you can make a 3D lenticular image. What's the process behind it, and how do we, how can we see a 3D image without the use of glasses? If anybody's going to know, it's going to be Jake. So let's go inside and find out. Hi Jake, how are you Hello. doing? I'm Jonathan. Hello Jonathan, nice how are you? you? I'm yes. very well, thank yes. you. Thanks ever so much for this pleasure. inviting us to uh, feed it to the Atlantic uh, Europe. Is it possible we could start off by looking at some of your previous work? Yes, yes, we have some just over here, ready for you to see. Great. Here, then. Right, Jonathan, we've got uh, Step Up 3D. This is the latest poster uh, that we've produced um, for Universal Studios Touchstone Pictures, okay. who commissioned it. Um, this is a current release at the moment on the cinemas. So it is. That's amazing. This, so, th this is coming out, the Step 3D is coming out, and I've also got. Um, well, they're, they're sort of going in and out. How, how on earth did you manage to do that? Right, well, this was a 3D conversion. Um, I didn't have the luxury of, uh, of a 3D photograph on this. So we had to actually uh, basically uh, put depth perspective into the image itself, okay. which is quite a long and laborious process of uh, using computer graphics and uh, morphing technology to actually bend uh, the image. Um, and a lot of just plain Photoshop, actually, just, yeah, so, just, just so simple hard work. In terms of what the client gave you, you would just be given a, a single image? Or? Yeah, so I was, given, I was given a flat image, but with layers, fortunately. Um, okay. This makes life a lot, I mean, most uh, graphics now come in layered form, so, uh, for example, I would have uh, the, the logos would be in a separate layer. Like a Photoshop layer. That's so, right, yeah, Photoshop okay. layers, and uh, the characters here were in layers. If they're not in layers, then they have to be cut out, so right. that I can turn them into layers. Okay. So I usually... Uh, Usually nowadays we tend to get them in layers. We're going to, we're going to pitch the lens now. Uh, this is a 15 LPI 3D lens which is uh, bought from my supplier in America. It's made of Perspex, this particular sheet. It's quite thick as you can see. We're going to synchronise it with the print. We're going to use what's called a pitch checker, which is a series of bands which change from 100% to 99% in 0.1 increments, uh, in, in fact in 20 steps actually. So we're going to pop this on and you'll see straight away that we get some patterns like this. If I can okay, yeah, there, yeah. Like and we take it up so that we get a, a vertical pattern and then we move it over a bit. And what I do is I climb the ladder to get to the, uh, the desired height of viewing, the viewing, the correct viewing distance which we decide to be. I look basically down on it and then I just move left and right until I can see one of the bands becoming clear or black. And in this case, the, the black band, the band that's snapping correctly or, or flipping correctly, is 99.35. Uh, So, so basically, the, the process for, for start, you you've cr you know the right pitch you're using, and then that this is something you would now put into Photoshop before you before you print out, and then yes, it's going to match the the lens or the or right. lenticular lens, yeah. So six five zero two, and then we do a calculation. It's a simple calculation multiplied by the pitch, which is ninety nine point three percent. This gives us a new uh, pixel width of six four five six. So six four. Five, six. That's our new pitch. Uh, as I say, it has to be exposed by the laser system, which exposes it one pixel at a time, okay, in a line basically, and it moves along and sweeps the entire sheet of paper with laser light, and that will form a colour image into the emulsion which will then be processed and then we'll see it. It works in similar, in a gigantic way like a, a, a Boots Photo Lab does when you send your digital pictures in for printing. So it's, uh, as I say, it's, it's nothing like inkjet printing, but it's much, much faster. So I'm just going to take it out of the machine and we're going to, we're going to put it through the processor. Right. Right, so there it is in 2D. 
yes, you can see it's a, it's, a, it's a photographic print, an encoded photographic print. So all this 3D information is locked up into these, into these lines, all of them, and you can see quite, uh, quite clearly. So it's just a flat print, and the magic will happen when we put the lens on it. The lens will decode the image and will fire the respective lines into your eyes to give you a stereoscopic image, like so. And then instead of it, once you put the lens on, it ceases to be blurry and starts to become a, a, an image. So we'll be very carefully now, lift that up and we'll move it, just to brush off any dust. We'll go over to the laminator now. This is, as I said, this is what makes the process expensive because if this goes wrong, we have to start all over again. So when you did Step Up 3D, you were doing this 350 times? That's right, yeah, but we did get pretty slick at it. Just, it needs to be a constant motion. You can't stop once you start because if you start, if you stop, you'll get a line. Uh, so once you're committed, you're committed. Yeah, basically, yeah. Okay, that just dropped off like that, so we don't really want it to stick the lemon and then we can just well caught. Okay. Wow. Look at, Look at that. That's absolutely awesome. And that was in one take. Good grief. That, I mean, I'm hoping that... I, I think it is coming across our lens, actually. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, the lens itself um, focuses light from a, from a particular point. We're going to try and demonstrate it in reverse with this laser beam, which I have a beam here. And we can see that the beam coming in is actually being focused onto one pot here, where my thumb is, there. Yep. It's being focused onto one spot. Sure. You see? Yeah. Now that one spot represents one part of the image in reverse. Now if you put a spot here, it will only be seen where that beam is actually... Your eye would represent the direction of that beam. Right. And so your eye will only see that one spot. If we move the spot over, you'll be seen in a different place. So this is how the lens scale works. It focuses light from, from, uh, from one spot outwards and then projects it. In, in, a, in, a, in a beam, effectively. And each, each lenticule does exactly the same thing. So that we, we see one part of the image on one lenticule and it will build up over all the lenticules, you see. Have you noticed a, a change in your clientele since the boom or, or not? Are you having the same kind of customers because you sort of do quite bespoke work, mm. don't you? Uh, it's definitely improved since 3D television, oh, sorry, 3D cinema has, uh, uh, finally come of age and it's only come of age again through the the uh, digital realization which has made it uh, uh, much simpler to actually put a three-dimensional movie together whereas in the past it would gain it was bespoke work you had to have especially built projectors and things now it's uh, it's actually sitting on the back of uh, technology it's been around for quite a long time so there's nothing intrinsically new about it in terms of it improving my personal work yes it has yes because up until recently i wasn't getting a lot of 3d stuff i was getting a lot of flip stuff which i was just demonstrating to you earlier and uh, some animation um, but now people are seeing 3d movies they want 3d posters to go with the 3d movies so we're seeing a bit more of that okay mm. well i just like to focus on um the, the practicalities of uh producing a 3d print i mean we've got got one here did uh did you actually take this a picture of this yourself or was this a, yeah, a no, 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 conversion yes, yes. so if you're taking a picture of anything I mean, you can see this is the uh, one we saw earlier one of the uh is that tulips? Yes, yeah, these are tulips in Holland, uh, in Holland, one of the many farms where they grow tulips. And, and uh, so, can we just quickly go through the process of taking? Uh, you want a three? You want a three D lenticular print? Let's say you want a, this, a stationary image. I'm sure they weren't stationary because of the windy, but you want a stationary image. How many shots do you have to take? Do you have to take them with one camera, or, or it has well, to be at the same I'll, time? I'll or reveal a little secret on this one. This was actually done with um, a Canon. Uh, Canon EOS digital camera on uh, burst mode. 
Yeah. Now, um, what we do is you can you can set the shutters just to continuously fire, and it will give you about well, my this particular camera will give you about nine shots before it runs out of uh, memory. And basically, you just got to hold the camera and focus on, or well, just basically center on one part of the, the the flower, and you press the button, and you just move it with your hand like that. You just do a hand scan, and if you do it three or four times, one of those will be smooth enough to use. Okay. And so that doesn't require any fancy 3D equipment, you're just using an ordinary camera. With digital cameras, it's getting much easier now with this burst mode. So we reached a sort of a pinnacle now of, of where we can take lenticular technology? Um, I, think, I think there's some room to go, yeah. It, it very much depends if we're going to stay with the uh, LCD system or, or move on to OLED or discrete L LEDs because we're already using discrete LEDs for photographic printing where we can get 300 LEDs to the inch which is very fine. Um, now, we only need to be able to get tri-colour LEDs into that space, and then we've already got a pretty impressive display medium. Um, I can't imagine it being cheap for quite a long time, though. Mm. Um, maybe it's practical for small displays where you won't need such a huge array. Right. Um, but to get a matrix of LEDs uh, that could yield maybe at least, uh, say, 150 pixels per inch, you could then use a lenticular lens on that and have quite an effective 3D display. But they're, they're already doing it, but they are compromises at the moment. They're not really, not really there yet. What I'm hoping to get in the near future is to actually go backwards a little bit and start using, because I've, I've got, ax, I've got a, well, I bought a, um, a, a traditional camera, a 3D camera, a very large format 3D camera, which this goes back to, the, to say, the 1930s, this technology. Um, and I've got a modern variant of it, which is just coming over at the moment. And so I hope to be able to do some really beautiful 3D portraits, maybe of uh, famous people and you know, okay. celebrities and things like that, to do something. Because these, these will be really, really special. Really? They'll be really special, yeah. Um, but that's something... But ironically, that's an old analogue process. That is a film-based right. process. It's not a digital one. But... What I do is I use uh, scanners here to scan the, the the original master negatives in and then, then I can manipulate it digitally okay. and then make the prints as before. I guarantee with this camera no one will be doing this kind of work. This will be absolutely brand new for the 21st century. If you want to know some more information, what is it? It's lenticular-europe.com or there's jakepurchase.com but lenticular-europe.com is, uh, is probably the best website mm. to go to. So uh, go to that website to find out more about Jake and some of your, there's some stories there about his previous work as well. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.